So anything can affect. Uh, you got to be an expert on, on, on you got to keep your eyes open for everything, don't you, Stephen? Because, as we've said many times, if I had to pick whether it's supply-related or demand-related, I'd give up, because it, it's obviously both, and that's what, that's what dictates a price. What's, what do you think is taking precedence right now, supply or, or, or demand? Well, yeah, thanks, Joe. Um, and, and indeed, the, the news on the vaccine is really relevant. I mean, I, I think what's really interesting is, is primarily the demand numbers. I mean, this, this round trip that we've had over the last, you know, call it, um, you know, week and a half, um, which is pretty spectacular, is really just the market trying to figure out what the demand impacts of incremental shutdowns that we've seen and some slowing in real-time demand data. So it's, it's not as if there, this hasn't, there hasn't been an impact here. But it's certainly the market was a little bit ahead of itself and a little bit anticipatory on the demand side. I think the demand side is much harder right now on the supply side. We feel really convicted on what's going on on the supply side, um, that it's still very, very, very um, supportive for the market. The, uh, the supply side, at any given moment, geopolitical things can just throw a huge wrench in the works. And at the front page of every newspaper today is President Biden uh, warning uh, President Putin on Ukraine. A and we already have seen a lot of, I don't know, it's political footballs, natural gas, pipelines, et cetera, in Europe and here. I mean, it, it couldn't supply all of a sudden, it could rear its ugly head as well, supply concern. It, it could. I guess what I, where I was coming from was, you know, if you look at the big elements of supply, right, if you look at OPEC and, and OPEC Plus, and the meeting last week in terms of their plan to continue to methodically bring back barrels to the market. And I think that gave the market a lot of clarity in terms of, you know, some of the participants that see, you know, real-time demand not being as concerned with bringing those barrels back. And then on top of it, you know, the part of the market that we see really intently um, is, you know, the U.S. supply wedge. And that was the thing that really took down prices over the last decade. And, you know, I, I think the U.S. producers are really standing pat on these strategies right now. And so, you know, and if anything, a little bit of volatility is good for this market because it reminds producers that, you know, they can't, you know, underwrite, you know, 70 or $80 oil forever. And so I think the volatility plays a little bit into that supply, supply side dynamic. So I hear you on the upside risks, but at the same time, um, the big moving pieces look very set for 22. Um, and I think that's constructive for the, for the commodity backdrop, to be honest. I guess in terms of demand, you, you, you can look at individual uh, producers, but it seems like you need to be a macro economist then. I mean, are you any better than a, uh, than a Fed watcher, or is that really where you get your data? What, what will global growth look like? And I'll just translate prices based on that. Well, I mean, we do benefit at the firm from having a really good macro product and, um, you know, from, from our macro and, and broader economic outlook, we definitely do feed that into. We're looking at, at, at essentially the leading edge um, economic indicators in different geographies um, as an indication of demand. But you're right, um, supply is easier to count barrels than demand is uh, for oil analysts. And so the demand piece of, of it is you're really relying on how good is your view of each and every region. But by the way, Joe, I'd say over, you know, what equity investors should be cared about is over the medium term, you really, I mean, the relationship between broader economic growth and, and, and oil demand growth is so strong that, you know, that's sort of sways you. I mean, it's really a binary decision. Is the world going to grow? Is it going to grow you know, strongly or, or, or a little, you know, lower? And what does that mean for demand? And it's a pretty low, it's a pretty low error band in terms of those two outcomes. The thing in oil to watch for is you want to watch for the pandemics and the, and, and the recessions, right? Um, so I think from an equity investor perspective, I don't think um, those those small changes on the economic outlook are as impactful as they are for somebody that's trading the commodity day to day, if you will. 